Hello chessmates, welcome to a new video. Today we are going to work with Rook Endgames. I'm going to be solving puzzles and as I solve them I will be explaining everything I think and everything I know about uh, the positions that will be on the board. I know Rook Endgames can be a little annoying for many players and in some way I enjoy analyzing and explaining these positions so I hope this uh, helps in some way so let's start okay we are playing as white in this position we have a pawn at 6 black has a pawn at 7 and we have two pawns against two pawns so let's analyze what can we play the first move I'm uh, taking a look at is this c7 it seems nice I guess after c7 black can play rook c1 controlling my own past pawn so I can't promote but then I can play something like rook a4 controlling a black past pawn that looks fine but a uh, black can still check it means that when I move to c6 that's probably the only square then a uh, black can promote I can take he takes and if I promote then there will be a check here getting my queen and probably winning the end game so c7 actually doesn't seem that strong however now I'm uh, looking at some different move that seems very strong I'm analyzing the possibility to make sure that this rook can't escape from this square so the pawn won't be uh, promoting um, that's why I'm thinking about this move rook d2 this is very interesting I mean there is another move that uh, is, is rook a4 usually the rook is fine behind the pawn controlling putting pressure but if I play rook a4 uh, there will be checks that's not good so that's why I'm thinking the possibility to attack the pawn and keep protecting this file with a move like rook d2 then he can't move the rook because I will be taking the pawn that won't be check and I'm threatening c7 and c8 that seems very strong so I'm going to play that because I'm almost sure that's the right way to win in this endgame yeah well black can still play something like rook over here to control my pawn but I will be taking and then black can check but I will hide my king behind the pawn and probably I will be winning maybe I can use some Lucena, Lucena's bridge or something but this endgame after I get the pawn should be winning so I'm going to play it I have to capture the pawn here on a2 because he's promoting so I take here yeah that's the solution okay we are playing as black here and we have four pawns against four pawns I have a passed pawn outside here and white has a passed pawn over here as well there are some interesting moves for example king, is, king is 6 seems fine also rook d4 is a possibility we need to analyze because it's trading and transposing to a pawn's endgame so we're going to take a look at that so yeah those are interesting possibilities. Uh, king e6 actually doesn't seem that strong because white can't play rook d6 check and then I don't get too much I mean at least he can come back later at least so I'm going to analyze the possibility of trading rooks and transposing to king and pawns endgame this is interesting because then I have two passed pawns here and I think the king is not getting both pawns I mean one of them is promoting for sure and white passed pawn will be controlled because my king is in the square you know 
of the pawn. So um, I'm controlling that pawn. Of course, white can still create a pass pawn over here, but that's too slow. It, it's going to take too much time, and I will be promoting very soon. So yeah, rook d4 actually it seems clear. It's winning for black. Well, in this position, it is white to move. And we have king and two rooks versus king and two rooks. Let's see what happens here. At first sight, I can uh, analyze this move king d4, check getting the rook, but black can play something like uh, king b7. So, yeah, that's the line I will be analyzing probably another possibility is this king b6 this looks fine because after king b6 black can't go up because there will be a skewer getting the rook so after king b6 the only move is king d8 oh well actually Black can play as a uh, king b8 as well, but it's not very strong. I'm mating, I'm mating black after king b8 because I can do this attraction, rook a8, the king has to go there, and then I have mate with rook c8. So king b6, king b8 I have mate, king d7 I have rook, and king d8 I can check the king comes up to e7. That's the only move. And then I can continue checking. Let's say rook a7. The king will have to go up. And then I have one more check here. Rook c6. And then I'm getting the rook. So I'm going to repeat that to check just to check it. But it seems more or less clear. So king b6 check. The king has to go to d8. Then I can play rook a8. King e7, I can play rook a7, the king has to go up to f6, and then I I can play rook c6, check. And then I'm getting the rook. So I'm going to play that. Check, check, and well, check again, but this is even easier. Okay. Okay, and here we are playing as white, and we have king and rook versus king and rook, and one passed pawn here on the sixth rank. Yeah, well, uh, there is a move we always have to analyze, and it is just advance the passed pawn, because then black won't be too many ways to to play against that. I mean after h7 black has to move rook h2 or rook d8. Our moves should be losing. So I can see that after rook h2 I'm winning the end game. Because I will have an in between and then I will have a deflection. So after rook h2 I will play rook f1 the queen, I mean, the king will go up somewhere over here, and then I will play rook f2, deflecting the rook from h2, so my pawn will be able to promote. He takes my rook, I promote, uh, his king is well here, but there's no mate, okay? There's a check, but this is not mate, so that line seems, seems fine for me. h7, and after rook here, I'm winning with in between and deflection. I am h7, what happens after rook d8, that's the other line. But I think I can use the same idea, but instead of on the ranks, I will do it on the files. So I will play in between rook c6, the king has to go somewhere over here, and then rook d6, deflecting the rook. And then uh, black has to take and I promote, and then we have king and queen versus king and rook, which is winning. Probably takes some moves, but it's winning. So let's play it. A7, check and check. 
and then promotion. Okay, let's see one last puzzle. Okay, in this position it is black to move. We have a pawn up and our rook is a little active here. His king is a little passive. His rook is on g5, maybe attacking the pawn, but the rook doesn't have uh, too many squares to move. Mainly here in, in, the, in the files, the rook can't move here. I can see that I have the possibility to force a rook trade. I mean, I can play rook e5 here and then, and trading rooks for sure. There's nothing white can do to avoid trades. The question is what is going to happen in that pawn's endgame? I mean, in that pawn's endgame. In general, pawn's endgames with one pawn up are winning, but here it's only two against one. And, and there are rook pawns that makes it a little more complicated. So let's take a look. Rook here, he has two options. He can trade directly or he can play in a four. So let's see. Rook takes, I take. Something good is that I have the opposition. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to win in that pawn's endgame. I'm getting one of these three squares in then one or two next moves. So let's say black white plays king f3, I will play king f5, taking the opposition, and then king g3, king e4. Then I'm, I took one of these three squares, so I'm going to get the pawn. For sure, that's a theoretical endgame. And if I get the pawn, I have two pawns up, there's nothing to analyze, it's winning for black. Yeah, because after rook e5, rook takes, I take, notice that black has diagonal opposition, that's very helpful. If we have diagonal opposition, we will have mm, regular opposition here, and then we get the squares we need. So rook e5, we know that trading is not uh, good for white. What happens with king f4? Well, that line is probably a little confusing because, as I can see, there are some ways to win. I'm analyzing this uh, rook f5, for example. If he doesn't trade, I'm taking a second pawn here on g5. And if he trades, I'm transposing to this endgame, which is winning because in some point I will be advancing a little with my king. And I should be able to capture this pawn on h4. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah, after rook, uh, after king f4, rook f5 is winning. Probably rook takes rook is winning. Yes, almost for sure is winning. Uh, trading rooks. Uh, we have a passed pawn here protected by another pawn, so it's winning. So, yeah, that line of king f4 is winning in two different ways. I hope the engine doesn't ask me about that line because, as I said, I have two ways to win according to my calculation. So, let's play it. Now we know that after rook e5, uh, white has two options, rook takes or king f4. Probably we will have to face uh, this in the analysis. Let's see. Well, white plays king f4. So, okay, here we, ha we need to analyze again because I think that I win with rook f5, but I think that I win with rook takes rook as well. Well, I I'm going to play rook f5. I, I think it's clearer, this rook f5. The endgame with the passed pawn, I don't see it completely clear. So, yeah, because I have a passed pawn, but then the king is a little active that in that line of rook takes and king here. Then he can play king e4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to play the other line of rook f5. I think this is probably the best. Yes. Okay. So, this is the video I wanted to show you today.
I hope you have enjoyed it and also that you have learned something new here. If it was like that, give me likes. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next.